basically the things that we need to authenticate the kubectl command line tool and then we are on kubernetes then we can create our own pod with our own mounts and mount it to the file system and read everything okay this sounds like a plan hello world i'm zenit and today we're gonna solve the next hack the box challenge which is gonna be steam cloud this looks like it's a pretty easy one or at least it's rated as an easy one we have cloud rce and account misconfiguration so i'm guessing by cloud they mean something like own cloud or something like that not something more in the realms of kubernetes which would be an actual cloud thing and i think would be a bit harder but for now let's just go with that i did an initial scan which gave already back a ton of results so let's go get an initial look at what happened over here so i run a, a sin scan the all options enabled which shows me the version numbers of all the services running on this machine as well as the potential os that this machine is running so for now what do we have here we have ssh which for some weird reason every act the box challenge has an ssh nowadays we have an alternative ss https so we have 8443 which is usually used for development purposes so not sure why it's open and i guess that's it so i was wrong apparently something with kubernetes is going on as we can see from this reply or this response we got some form of api so we have api version v1 blah 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 failure user system anonymous cannot get path nice ports trinity txt back reason forbidden we can also get the path slash because it's forbidden and what was the last one again a slash so no idea why it tried slash twice maybe the payload was different and we can also see that it's running minikube now i have no idea we have a fingerprint don't know what we're gonna do with that right now and for os it's linux cpe cpe the cloud optimized linux distribution not too sure on that so we have a couple of informations but not very much we have this port which is a website so let's try to go to this website our ip is 10 is the one showing down below i hate reading ips out loud so let's just go with https since it said it has tls enabled let's go with the rest of the ip over here and then the special port 8443 which is usually used for development purposes no idea why it's used here so it looks like we cannot get the path i thought this was supposed to be easy what can we do with this information probably nothing but now that we have the port we can run a more exhaustive exhaustive scan let's run it on what do we have 22 i think 22 and 8443 and we are also gonna run script vuln i think was the command okay so it's not script it's just script not sure if it's vuln or vulners but um, let's do a vuln scan and let's run this one i'm pretty sure it was vuln but this website tells me it vulners that's how it is sometimes sometimes you just wait but anyhow so this looks like it was done with kubernetes maybe it's the kubernetes managing interface so let's just open up burp suite and try to read whatever the traffic is that we're getting here perfect so we have our burp going on let's open the browser real quick and let's go to the same url that we are over here and then let's move over here and we'll know what's happening the scan it's taking a while so let's just go with this setup for now now let's take a look at the history so we get the full extent we have something with kubernetes not really i i'm not really familiar with the ui of kubernetes i usually use the command line by the way do we have the command line tool for that we don't so apparently we would need to install it 
first let's look this header means because i've never encountered this header so or maybe just go with kubernetes web api because i'm pretty sure that's what's running or that's what we are running into yeah i thought this was supposed to be easy <laughs> i'm completely lost right now so let's take a look if we got some vulnerabilities with the scan we got some vulnerabilities on the ssh which is kind of weird for a hack the box machine but maybe we have to go with this one this time i mean it's not the newest ssh version right it's an older one so there is possibly some cves but before we do any of that i first have to let my cat in because it's meowing i like that the name of this exploit is ssh ss stranger things what does this do don't download a file using a vulnerable client oh what that makes no sense I i'm too confused by that to make any sense of it scp client the S stranger things exploit it's all in the scp client i mean okay i'm not pretty sure what is happening but i guess let's just go with it copy the exploit to stranger things that let's make it executable and now let's actually run it and say it has a couple of okay, maybe we have to run those to unix or this stranger things file and now we can run it okay so it looks like we have to open it manually and see why the hell it doesn't text i mean this is essentially how it's supposed to run we have nicknamed this ssh stranger things because the bug is so old it could be exploited by an 8-bit Demogorgon tested on Python 3.6.7 and requires Paramico package. The server listens on port 222, it accepts any username and password and it generates a new whole key every time you run it. Download a vulnerable... Uh, download a file using a vulnerable client. The local path must be a dot. But this makes no sense. This would mean that this is running on the server? What? No, hey. Okay, this blows my mind. Um, I, I can't seem to understand what's actually happening here. Five hours later. Hack the box usually never does something with SSH. That's not the hack the box way. So let's take a look at how to install kubectl. I've done it a million times and I've Googled it a million times and I still need to Google it another million times. I know how to do it, but I think there's like an install script that you download. Yeah, exactly. So this is the install script that you download. It's running. And now let's check kubectl dash dash server https, which I'm in the wrong directory. So cube, cube, do I have alias k kubectl? Now I have it. All right. Cube dash dash server https. Uh, and now comes the target IP and 8443. And let's look at that pod. Please enter username. What username should we try? Any suggestions? I'm not sure. Um, anonymous. Anonymous. Okay, so it doesn't look like we can use the tool either. Let's just go with a bigger, more thorough scan. Then let's do an OA and all ports scan. And I think we can do a T5, the fast thing. Pseudo privilege. And now we can run. And even though I use the fast thing, it's gonna take forever just because we have to go through all the ports. So now in the meantime, let's try this without the um, HTTPS. Let's just try to connect to the server, you know, via the IP, old fashioned style. And the connection to the server was refused. Let's download the next tool, which is kubelet.ctl, which is a client to manage the Kubernetes. And sudo e, because I don't want to do it. Okay, now, perfect. And now I should have kubelet.ctl. Nice. Maybe we can access kubelet. Kubelet l server called here. Server, and then let's get target. Again, with the cat targets and the pods and then... Okay, we finally got something out of it. After 
a lot of things. So we have an Nginx running. Okay, I thought that much. We have an API server running. We have a schedule. I mean, this is pretty much standard stuff that every Kubernetes cluster has running somehow. Mm, I mean, okay. Uh, can it be that easy? Okay, maybe it's really, really easy and I was just stupid in the beginning, kissing on the wrong thing. Um, there should be, yeah, there should be an exec. So there's an exec and um, as you can see, everything is in the cube system namespace. So this is basically cube CTL managing stuff where you have like the storage provision that looks out where does the storage get claimed, etc., etc. That's too complicated for this matter. And then we have proxy stuff. And then we have this Nginx over here that is in the default one, which is usually where you put your stuff if you have no idea how Kubernetes <laughs> works or if you don't care. So that's where your custom app is gonna be. So let's try exec. Who am I? Root. Okay, fantastic. Um, can it really be that easy? Where the hell is uh, what's in here? LS. Do we have in root? We have user in root. Okay, that's weird. Cat user.txt. What? Normally we have the root flag in here, but I guess they couldn't make it that easy, right? So let's submit the user flag. And to be honest, that was actually a piece of cake if I wasn't focusing on the wrong thing. Okay, now that we have submitted the user flag, let's go on to find the root now this is the part where it gets a bit harder because we may have to escape this nginx to go to the home but let's go to a big guide that um, you can always consult when you have no idea what to do which is hack tricks and now we're looking for cloud or kubernetes or something like that and if we're lucky we'll find something that will help us escaping Kubernetes. Oh, oh, there it was cloud security, Kubernetes security, and testing Kubernetes services. It sounds like what we want or need. Attacking Kubernetes from inside the pod. That is our situation, right? Wait, what's our IP? In bash, do we have bash? Oh, is it I have config? No. All right, okay, so let's go back into our root. We have no SSH directory in here. What's in home? It's empty. Okay, so there is no user, so really it is just Docker. Uh, it is just a root user. I mean, I thought I was in escaping Linux, just how to secure it. Here, Docker breakout. That's what I was. <laughs> and this was from good game. I purchased a connection with two shells and host mount. Mount? So do we have something mounted on SDA1? Is that really it? I mean, that could be, that would be almost too easy, right? Looks like there is nothing there. Okay, you know what? Um, Let's start with what we should have started and maybe take a look at some enumeration technique. So it looks like from inside the pod, you can use several n variables. We have the API server. So let's just try echo uh, API server. It's empty. Echo service account is something in var secret IO. We have service account. Kubernetes IO and we have a service account. And oh, this looks interesting. We have a CA cert, we have a token, and those are basically the things that we need to authenticate the kubectl command line tool. And then we are on Kubernetes, and then we can then we can create our own pod with our own mounts and mount it to the file system and read everything. Okay. This sounds like a plan. And then cat here and C A dot third and then B this and go over here called my data Steam Cloud and then we can see a cert. Now let's do the same thing that we did, but not for the cert. Let's do it actually for the token. Grab it and then token and that's in here and okay, fantastic. Now we can just don't support our token which will be token maybe this is too confusing for bash so let's actually move token 
cube token and now we can export token get cube token and then let that equals okay now echo our token looks good and then we can try to connect the cube see cube ctl and then we have the server which is abs know the one that we tried before and it didn't work because first of all we didn't have uh, the password but also it failed to validate the key so let's do this and what was the command for the token which equals our token and now we can say oh, something's not adding oh <laughs> we are now able to do stuff with kubernetes oh isn't that awesome so let's actually mount the file system of the host into a pod and then create right but i'm just gonna do this real quick because i don't want to bore you with all the um what's it called Kubernetes stuff and namespace we want it to be in default and we have the spec in the spec we have the containers in the containers we have a name and pod we're gonna use engine x image because we know this one is already available and and now comes the funny part, which is the mounting of the volumes. So we say our mount pop is in slash munte as it usually is, and the name of the host file system. And then outside of the container spec, we have to spec volumes. And here we have name is host fs. We have the host pop. We are just gonna go with the root of the host. So we have everything and then and then do some configuration so that we have the service account running over here there. and now we can basically apply so by the way if you're wondering why did he use that specific um if we do a describe pod engineering we can see that it's running this version this image so since we don't know if this server has connection to the internet and can download any image we're just gonna go with an image that is already present so it doesn't have to pull it so now we're gonna apply this file which yaml okay i have a typo of course this one here volume volume mount okay this Let's try it again okay we have the tiny pot let's check out perfect now we can cube ctl exec help so here we have it and then we want it. okay so we can do it with cube ctl our user doesn't have the right permissions but we don't need to do this with cube ctl because we can just do it cube uh, let ctl uh, so in here we change two things one which is bash bash so let's do our pods again then it pot so in here then it pot the pot the container name we chose then it pot for that as well container not for uh, with it okay uh, <laughs> i mistyped my own name it's then it to end now okay this is my new name Okay, it's not in the root. Of course, it's not in the root. It's in the mount directory. This looks more like it. Mount root. And here we have the root flag. Amazing. How easy it can be sometimes. Of course, it's only easy if you are familiar with Kubernetes. So I would suggest that you go check out my Kubernetes video. So you're up to date on Kubernetes and know what the hell I actually did over here. There's a video popping up over here about Kubernetes. And there are some more on my page.